Hello, we're in London. There's Big Ben. <laughs> Coincidentally, today's topic is about a couple of pricks that work right over there in Westminster. Uh, one in particular, Mr. Jacob Reese Mogg. Oh, so look at this man, it's such a shame it's a foggy day. Just drive past Westminster. Um, yeah, I want to talk about Jacob Reese Mogg. Why is this guy suddenly a hero of the working class? I don't understand. I don't understand how this happened. Someone needs to fill me in. Um, basically, if you don't know this guy, he's an Eton schoolboy conservative toff. The kind of guy that the working class in the 80s would have completely and utterly despised. But somehow he's become a hero of the working class and especially quite a big mover in the, uh, in the, in the Brexit world. Whenever I've seen this guy interviewed, and I've seen him interviewed quite a few times, especially on, on Brexit, I did, he just, I think the only thing I can come up with is this guy, is he's got the posh accent, so people who don't understand the argument that well just instantly agree with him because he's got the posh accent and it sounds like he knows what he's talking about. I mean, that, that's, that's my only guess to how people can think that this guy is, is informed. Uh, but the main thing is, I've, I've said it in a previous video, the guy, he, he's known on, he's had viral videos on YouTube where he's sort of bashing SJWs and stuff and uh, he, he, he's become a hero. Oh, have a minute, there's the, there's the eye, London eye. I don't think you can see it, it's on the right. I'm just driving along the Thames now. Um, Right, this video might be a bit cut and paste today uh, because I really want to do a video in central London but when I'm driving in central London as you can see right now I'm right on Trafalgar Square <laughs> I kind of have to concentrate on what I'm doing <laughs> it's not really that easy there we go that's a nice view there um, um, so yeah I just cut from Westminster Who's beeping me right now? This is what I'm talking about. This one makes this one makes it tricky. <laughs> I thought it was a perfect fit in to uh, talk about what I was one planning on talking about, which is the Eaton Boy Toffs at Westminster that seem to have all the love and respect of the working class. I can't work it out. Jacob rees mogg you know, Boris Johnson, for uh, Nigel Farage to a certain extent, although he's even more sort of big banker territory, but it's all the same thing, these upper class toffs. How have they suddenly become heroes of the working class? The, the working class of the 1980s would absolutely despise these pricks. So what's happened and why do we not have an equivalent on as a Labour leader? You know, why do we not have a, a hero of the working class fighting the other side? All, all we seem to have is Jeremy Corbyn, James O'Brien, um, who's that little, uh, that little guy, Owen Jones, Owen Jones, I mean, you know, whether you like their politics or not is, is different, but why do the working class despise these people? Even though they've probably, well, they've, they've definitely got more of their, their interests at heart than Jacob Rees-Mogg and Boris Johnson. And the question is just perception, isn't it? That's, that, that, that's what it is, just pure perception. Jacob Rees-Mogg is liked by the working class because you can find great YouTube clips of him damning SJWs, damning students, feminists, vegans, all this sort of thing that the working class despise. Um, but when you get him in an argument on, on an interview on Brexit and he's talking absolute trash and anyone that's actually educated on the subject knows he's talking absolute rubbish but because he talks in a posh accent and he sounds informed and he sounds like he knows what he's talking about 
people just blindly believe him because they like the YouTube videos, they like the stuff that he does against feminists and, and SJWs and stuff and he's a, an internet YouTube sensation and they're just blinded by the fact that his politics <laughs> are no good for the working class. So how do we get someone on the other side? How do we get a working class hero that's pro-European? Um, you know, like I, I think I've said previously, if, if the Labour Party went pro-European from, from the start, I mean, I know secretly Jeremy Corbyn, we all know, I think, really didn't like Europe for whatever reasons. I guess he likes more smaller governments. I don't know what his reasons are, but he was never going to go full frontal on the European thing. But if Labour said tomorrow, look, if you vote for us, we will go back into the European Union and they'd have 14, what was it, 14 million people in this country that voted to remain. Surely he'd have all those votes and all the people, the fishermen and all the people that desperately regret voting for Brexit on, the, on his side. And he'll win an election. Surely he'll win the election. So it just seems like a plus plus for Labour. Uh, I'll be honest, Keir Starmer, I don't really know too much about this guy, I've got to be honest. I, I haven't looked too much into his politics, but just his perception, I mean when it comes to actually voting, I will. Um, but just his perception is just oh, he's so polished, isn't he? He's so polished. I don't, he doesn't look like a real guy, and I think that's what that's what Labour need. They need a real person that's lived life, you know, like Nigel Farage supposedly said he did, even though he just done banking. <laughs> he didn't have a proper real job. He just done banking. Uh, the only one I can think of is there's a, a I think Birmingham uh, MP Jess Phillips. She seems the right sort of sort of girl. She seems very working class and she knows what she's talking about. Um, I don't know. What's your thoughts guys? As always, let me know. And I suppose I'd better really concentrate on where I'm driving because I think I've just missed two turnings already. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah.